Welcome to Voting Location Assessment Online Training. In this video, you will learn how to prepare for an inspection and complete the voting location inspection checklist. Preparing for an inspection. All voting locations are to be inspected. Each inspection must be done in pairs for safety reasons and will take approximately 30 minutes. The RO will ensure each pair has the schedule with the date and time to meet with the landlord. Voting Location Inspection Checklist, F0255, for each location. Voting Location Inspection Reference Guide, F0256. Voting Location Inspection Kit. Voting Location Inspection ID Letter, and their Elections Ontario ID Badges. Meeting with the landlord. Inspection pairs will meet with the landlord too. Gather any property contact and site contact information that wasn't collected during the initial telephone call with the RO. Confirm that photography is allowed. Reconfirm that a modem may be used in voting locations with technology, and determine the elector route of travel at the voting location. Landlords or property managers may opt to walk you through as you complete the inspection. If landlords or property managers ask about placing a hold on dates, rental agreements, or have any other questions, you may let them know that Elections Ontario will follow up once locations have been reviewed and approved. Completing the F0255 The first four pages of the inspection checklist may have already been completed by the returning officer. Inspecting pairs should ensure that all fields are appropriately filled out. Validate the location name and address. The location name is the official name that is known to the public. The location address is the physical, or street address. This information must be accurate, because it will appear on the voter information card, the Elections Ontario website, and used by electors to locate their voting location. In the additional location information section, ensure the following is identified. The voting room to be used. And the square footage of the voting room, measured in feet. Note that the number of electors assigned for tech polls, or the number of polls assigned for non-tech polls, will be completed by the RO after the inspection. The funding type, and the HST number, if applicable, can be completed with the landlord or site contact, if they were not already recorded by the RO. For location category and type, only one category should be selected from the listed options. The location poll type and voting process section will be completed by the RO. If technology process is checked, you will need to complete the technology assessment portion of the inspection. The furniture required section will indicate the total number of tables and chairs and the size of the tables that the landlord can provide. The RO may complete the requirements for furniture still to be ordered after the inspection is complete. Additional location details, such as on-site security guard requirements and any scheduled construction should have already been completed, including expected start and end dates. The accessibility information section is filled out after the inspection is complete. The information in the contact section must be carefully and accurately captured, as some of this information appears on the rental agreement, and or, the check issued to the landlord. The landlord is the name of the organization or company that owns the location. The RO will include the main contact person here. The payee is the name of the organization or company that receives the payment for the location rental. Under attention to it should list a department or specific person. The signing authority is the name of the person who signs the rental agreement. For the site contact section, ensure at least one, preferably two, location contacts are clearly identified. This is the person the RO will contact if there are any issues during advance polls or on polling day. In the comments section, 
identify any relevant information that may affect whether the building can be used as a voting location. Enter the date the inspection was completed, and sign. The RO will date and sign the second line, upon completing data entry in EMS. The next step is to assess the voting location for accessibility. There are seven categories to review. You will evaluate each item for accessibility, and assign a score based on the description in the points column. If the criteria score exactly meets the minimum points indicated, you must indicate which remediation product is required, and specify the quantity in the remediation products table. In this example, you provided a score of 5, because you determined that a ramp can be installed on the pathway. Because the score exactly meets the minimum points indicated, you have to go to the remediation products table. You then select the appropriate ramp and identify the number required as 1. If the mandatory criteria does not meet the minimum points listed, the location is not accessible. In this case, the location automatically fails the accessibility assessment and is deemed not accessible. The location cannot be used and a new location needs to be identified and inspected. You must however, still complete the full inspection. If you cannot find a new location, and this is the only suitable option, the RO can request an exemption approval from the CEO to use this location. Conducting the inspection Internal inspections If a location is in a self-contained apartment, or isolated northern community, only an internal inspection is required. That is the route from the elevator to the voting room. In this case, signage, accessible parking, exterior pathway to building entrance, and entrance to building assessment criterion are not mandatory, and do not need to be inspected. Beginning your inspection. An accessible route is barrier-free. According to the building code, barrier-free design means that a building and its facilities can be approached, entered, and used by persons with physical or sensory disabilities. The route can include ramps, curb cuts and elevators, but the transition from one area to another must be barrier-free. Before assessing the voting location for accessibility, discuss and determine with the landlord. The most accessible route from the parking lot to the voting room, or, for internal inspections, from the elevator to the voting room. Which entrance will be available on polling day, and or, advance poll days, and. Any impact to students if the location is in a school. The route you follow during the accessibility assessment, is the route electors will follow, and should be agreed upon by inspecting pairs and the landlord. Complete each section of the Voting Location Inspection Checklist, F0255, using the following guidelines. You can also refer to the Voting Location Inspection Checklist, Reference Guide, F0256, for detailed instructions. Signage Evaluate the building signage for its visibility and readability. For categorization purposes, your first photograph should always be of the building and its signage. Only take subsequent photos if you encounter accessibility challenges, obstructions, or other issues during the inspection. Accessible parking According to Elections Ontario's Site Accessibility Standards, proximity to transportation and parking at the site are not a requirement. The parking criteria will only fail if the building provides parking, but does not have the correct number of accessible spots, and additional spots cannot be created with remediation products. The number of required accessible parking spaces is determined by the total number of parking spots available. For instance, if there are a total of 10 parking spaces, there must be at least one accessible parking space. You will likely be conducting your inspections during the day, so you may ask your contact if the building's exterior lights work and stay on. If there are no lights in the parking lot, look for nearby street lights. Ensure the parking lot is located on firm and level ground, and there are no large potholes or recessions in the pavement. Exterior pathway to building entrance. 
examine the characteristics of the pathway and take measurements of its features, including the width, level, slope, and ramp width, slope, and handrail height, if applicable. The pathway is the route taken from the parking lot to the entrance the voters will use on polling day. This may not be the building's main entrance. Along the route, a pathway may have a slope or a permanent or temporary ramp. The entire pathway, including any ramp, needs to be wide enough and within accessible slope limits so that a person using a wheelchair, scooter, or service animal, can travel safely and without obstruction. If a ramp has a slope between 2.8 degrees and 4.8 degrees, handrails are required and must meet the minimum height and width requirements specified in the checklist. Any slope steeper than 4.8 degrees does not meet the accessibility requirements. Only an improper or missing ramp that cannot be fixed with remediation will fail the mandatory criteria. The standards for paved pathways are specific only to the location property itself, and do not include municipal sidewalks or roads leading to the location. Entrance to building Evaluate the lighting, and measure the width of the entrance, as well as the height of any doorway thresholds. When measuring doorways, be sure to measure the clear open width. For example, measure from the door frame across to the narrowest point, which might be the crash bar mounted on the door. If there is a center post, which is typical with double doors, and the door is not of sufficient width, check with the landlord to determine if the center post can be removed for polling day. If this is possible, indicate this requirement on the checklist, F0255, and route of travel. When measuring the door threshold, lay your clipboard across the threshold. Then measure the threshold gap from the bottom of the clipboard to the ground using your tape measure. The measurement should be 1.2 cm, or below, to meet accessibility standards. If a door has a power assist opener, ensure that it works. Some facilities disable the power assist. You will need to ensure that it functions correctly, and if it does, that it will be active and available on voting days. If a door does not have a power assist opener, conduct a closed fist test. The fist test is a simple way to evaluate levers, door handles and other devices that can be manipulated. Using a closed fist, try to open the door. If a door does not pass the fist test, check with the landlord whether the door could be left propped open on polling day. If this is not possible, an information assistant must be stationed at the door to assist electors. Mark this requirement on the checklist, under the Remediation Products table. A poll official will verify power assist once again prior to voting days. If it is not functioning properly, the RO must assign an information assistant to the building entrance to open the doors when required. Interior Path to Voting Room Measure any slopes, ramps, thresholds, corridors, and doorways along the path to the voting room, ensuring the route is accessible and free of obstructions. When evaluating the interior path, remember that highly polished surfaces can be slippery, and wet and loose mats can be tripping hazards. Score the floor surface based on the section of the route with the worst condition. Overhanging or protruding objects in school hallways can include a cupboard or trophy case. A remediation option would be to place a table underneath it, so a person with a visual impairment can tap the table with their walking stick to warn them of the obstacle. Next, score the voting location on whether the voting room is located on the ground floor, or if an elector can use an accessible elevator to reach the voting room. Elevator requirements include Proximity to the entrance. Signage. Door opening width that meets the accessibility minimum. Door closing delay of at least 8 seconds, and buttons that meet accessibility requirements. Use your tape measure to determine the distance from the elevator to the main accessible entrance. If it is too far, you will need to approximate the distance by measuring your stride, and then walking the distance, counting your steps. To measure your stride, 
extend the tape measure approximately 1 meter, lock it, and place it on the ground. Start with both feet lined up with your toes at the zero point. Take one step forward, parallel to the tape measure, and record the length of your stride to the tip of your toes. Now try to maintain a uniform stride as you count your steps from the entrance of the building to the elevator. Multiply the steps by the length of your stride to get an approximate distance. A final important task is to ask the contact whether an elevator requires a key, or an operator, and ensure it is identified with appropriate signage. Record this information on the checklist, F0255. Accessible washroom for staff. Elections Ontario is not required to provide bathrooms for electors, but we do provide accessible washrooms to accommodate poll officials. The returning officer uses this information to know which voting locations have accessible washrooms, if one is requested by poll officials. If the building has an accessible washroom, measure the entry door width, the toilet seat height, and the stall turning radius. To measure the stall turning radius, look for the largest part of the washroom stall. Stand in the middle, extend the tape measure out 150 centimeters, turn to see if the tape measure hits anything, for example, walls or fixtures. 150 centimeters is the minimum turning radius. Throughout your inspection you may have identified accessibility issues at the location that can be modified on polling day with remediation products. These products include ramps for thresholds, slopes and steps, cones for marking accessible parking spots, additional signage, and information assistance to open doors without a power assist opener. In cases where you need a temporary ramp, for every 1 inch vertical rise, you require a 1 foot horizontal ramp. A temporary ramp may extend several feet from the threshold. Consider whether or not this would impact the accessibility of the pathway. If existing parking is not accessible, you can use cones or pylons to delineate accessible parking spaces. Temporary signage can be used to direct electors. If the building entrance does not include a power assist, or it is not working, you must request additional information assistance, to open doors for electors who may require assistance. On days when polls are open for voting, poll officials will once again check to make sure the doorway power assist is functioning correctly. If not, the RO must assign an information assistant to the building entrance to open the doors when required. After assessing the need for remediation products, record the quantity of supplies required in the checklists, F0255, Remediation Products Table. The next section of the Voting Location Checklist, F0255, is Route of Travel. Draw a clear diagram of the accessible route as agreed upon with the landlord. Indicate any accessibility issues and where remediation is required. All existing ramps, stairs, and doorways along the route, and any measurements. This diagram has many purposes. It is included with the lease agreement, used to assist schools in determining if the route will impact students, and is reviewed by the poll supervisor when they visit their voting locations, to ensure no changes have occurred between the inspection and polling day. Technology Assessment All advanced polls are technology polls, and will be equipped with e-poll books and tabulators. Polling day voting locations with 1,000 electors or more, may utilize technology equipment. You will complete the General Technology Assessment section if technology process is checked in the Location Poll Type and Voting Process section. This assessment determines if the voting room can support technology, and also assists returning officers to review and update polling division boundaries. The general technology assessment is divided into three sections. Electrical Connectivity Setup date and time availability Electrical 
To complete this section, you will identify the total number of three pronged electrical outlets on each wall in the voting room. Test the three pronged outlets using the receptacle tester and record how many are functional and non functional for each wall. Record how many electrical outlets have physical issues for each wall, such as blackened, loose, or missing cover plates. Describe all known electrical issues in the location. Section 2 is Connectivity. Check the signal strength using the Open Signal application installed on the provided smartphone. Record the signal type and signal strength in the voting room. If the signal strength is 2 bars or fewer, walk around the room to find the wall with the strongest signal strength. Then run the speed test. Record the download speed, the upload speed, and the latency, aka ping, on the inspection checklist. Setup date, and time availability. Voting locations with technology require poll officials to enter the premises the day before polls open, to set up and test the equipment. This takes approximately 3 hours, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. The furniture will also need to be set up at this time if possible. Confirm with the landlord that the voting room is available at this time, or if they require an alternate time or date. Indicate this information in the setup date and time availability section of the checklist, F0255. The rental agreements will indicate the compensation the landlord receives for the use of their space for this extra day. The equipment needs to be securely locked up overnight, and the RO must arrange specific security measures. The next section is the poll layout page. On this page, you will draw a clear diagram of the voting room's layout to assist with the poll setup. This includes the furniture, placement of staff, and the technology equipment, if applicable. You must draw one for each location. The poll layout must include the following information. Voting location name and address. Location of doors and windows. The door where electors will enter and exit from. Any accessibility issues and proposed remediation, for example if the power assist door fails the minimum requirements, and an information assistant will be required to assist electors. The total number of electrical outlets present on each wall, including their functioning status. The signal type and signal strength, in number of bars. For locations with two bars or less, the ping, download, and upload speed nearest the wall with the strongest signal. The poll official will also use the diagram to review the location before polling day, or advance polls, to ensure there are no changes to the voting location since the inspection, and to set up the location. General Security Assessment You will also conduct a security assessment of each potential voting location. The security assessment involves determining whether the voting location has motion detectors, alarms, angled corners, clear sight lines, exit signs, and safe areas, among others. The results from each voting location security assessment must be kept on hand in the returning office. It will be used to determine potential security issues that may exist at a voting location. These criteria are not grounds to reject a location. You will also conduct a COVID-19 protocol assessment of each potential voting location. The COVID-19 protocol assessment involves determining whether or not the landlord has indicated measures to ensure the location follows the COVID-19 safety measures. This will assist the RO in the placement of poll officials and cleaning standards. Meet with the landlord to discuss each criteria required. Note down any comments from the landlord. Accessibility information. Once the inspection is complete, add all scores from the general accessibility assessment section then list the total in the accessibility score. Select one checkbox in the, is location accessible, according to the criteria in the general accessibility assessment section. Yes, indicates the voting location exceeds all the minimum scores for all the mandatory accessibility criteria. Yes, with remediations. Indicates the voting location requires remediation measures for at least one criteria. No, do not use indicates the voting location fails one or more of the mandatory accessibility criteria. No, exemption approved by CEO. 
indicates the voting location fails one or more of the mandatory accessibility criteria, but you have submitted an exemption request, F0257, and has been approved by the CEO. You only record this once an approved exemption, F0257, has been received. A copy of the approved exemption request, F0257, needs to be attached to the location's completed checklist, F0255. Finally, you will indicate the number of accessible parking spots and if the location has accessible washrooms. After the inspection, provide the completed checklist to the returning officer for review and data entry. Congratulations! You have reached the end of the training. You are now able to operate the tools contained in your voting location inspection kit, including the phone, receptacle tester, tape measure, and slope meter. Evaluate and fill out the voting location inspection checklist, F0255, including how to determine and record what remediation products might be required, and create the route of travel and poll layout diagrams. Topics in this training are covered in detail in the Voting Location Inspection Checklist Reference Guide, F0256, and in EOpedia. Please refer to the guide for assistance when conducting an inspection.